After conducting research, there are two main approaches you can use to describe the data you collect. Descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. In this video, we will focus on descriptive statistics. So let's have an example of a question that we will use to perform descriptive statistics. Is Friday the 13th unlucky? Scanlon, Lubin, Scanlon and Singleton, 1993, looked at accident statistics at hospitals in the southwest damned region of the United Kingdom. They took statistics both for Friday the 13th and Friday the 6th, which is the week before, in different months in 1989, 1990, 1991, and 1992. They looked at emergency admissions of accidents and poisoning. So we have the table presenting the data. We have the date, accidents by poisoning, Friday the 6th, Friday the 13th. So on October 1989, only four accidents by poisoning were reported, while on Friday the 13th, seven accidents were reported. In July 1990, six accidents by poisoning were reported on Friday the 6th and six accidents were reported on Friday the 13th. On September 1991, one accident was reported on Friday the 6th and five accidents were reported on Friday the 13th. In December 1991, nine accidents were reported on Friday the 6th and five accidents were reported in Friday the 13th. In March 1992, Nine accidents were reported in Friday the 6th and 13 accidents were reported in Friday the 13th. In November 1992, one accident was reported in Friday the 6th and six accidents were reported in Friday the 13th. So the question is, calculate the mean, median, standard deviation and interquartile range for each date. So what do we do? Let's start with Friday the 6th, accidents by poisoning. So let's first begin with calculating the mean, median, standard deviation, and interquartile range for accidents and poisoning cases reported on Friday the 6th from 1989 to 1992. So the number of accidents are 4, 6, 1, 9, 9, and 1. So the first step is to organize the data in ascending order. That is 1, 1, 4, 6, 9, and 9. The formula for median is n plus 1 divided by 2. n is the number of observations. In our data, we have 6 observations. So the median is equals to 6 plus 1 divided by 2. That is number of observations 6 plus 1 divided by 2. So our median will be 7 divided by 2. The median will be 3.5 number in ascending order. So considering our series of numbers 1, 1, 4, 6, 9, 9, we see the 3.5 number is between 4 and 6. The third and fourth number. So to get the median, we get 4 added to 6 divided by 2. That will be 10 divided by 2. Because 4 plus 6 is 10 divided by 2, so the median is 5. Let's go to the next step, which is determining the interquartile range. So remember, our series organized in ascending order is 1, 1, 4, 6, 9, and 9. So the lower quartile will be the lower quarter, which means it's the lower 25%. The half of the numbers in the series, remember, the numbers in our series are 6. So 6 numbers divided by 2 is 3. So we obtain the lower quartile by 3 plus 1 divided by 2. That is 4 divided by 2. So our lower quartile is the second number from the beginning of the series. So the second number from the beginning of our series is 1. So our lower quartile is equals to 1. On the other hand, the upper quartile is half our numbers, remember? So half of 6 is 3 plus 1 divided by 2. So the upper quartile is again 4 divided by 2. So the upper quartile 
is the second number from the end of the series. Remember, this is the upper quartile, so it should be found in the upper quarter. So the second number from the end of the series is 9. So the upper quartile is 9. The interquartile range is equals to upper quartile minus lower quartile. So upper quartile is 9 minus lower quartile is 1. So our interquartile range for this series is 8. Let's calculate the mean. The formula for mean is mean is equals to sum of observations divided by the number of observations. So the mean is equals to the numbers in our series 1 plus 1 plus 4 plus 6 plus 9 plus 9 divided by the number of observations is 6. So the mean is the total is 30 divided by 6 so the mean is 5. Let's go to the calculation of the standard deviation. We obtain standard deviation from the square root of variance. And variance is equals to sum of squares divided by n minus 1. Remember the n is the number of observations. So sum of squares is obtained by the sum of deviance squared. Deviance is equals to observation minus mean. What do we mean by this? Let's look at our data in a table form so that we can understand clearly. So, for our series, we have 1, 1, 4, 6, 9, and 9 accidents. We have already calculated the mean and found that the mean is 5. So, we fill 5 in all our data. So, to calculate the deviance, what we do is we subtract the number of observation by the mean. So, for the first one is 1 minus 5, so the deviance is minus 4. The sum of squared is the deviance squared. So minus 4 squared is 16. So remember, negative multiplied by negative is positive. So 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. The second one, again, is 1, which is the number of observations, minus the mean, which is 5, Again, we get negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. So the sum of squares is 16. The third number, the number of observations is 4. The number representing the observations is 4. The mean is 5. So 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. The other number, the number of accidents is 6. The mean is 5. So 6 minus 1 is 1. So 6 minus 5 is 1, 1 squared is equals to 1. The next number, the number of accidents is 9, the mean is 5. So 9 minus 5 is 4, 4 squared is equals to 16. The final number of accidents is 9, the mean is 5. Again, 9 minus 5 is 4, 4 squared is 16. So the sum of squares, we add all the numbers to get the sum of squares. 16 plus 16 plus 1 plus 1 plus 16 plus 16 is equals to 66. That is the sum of squared. Remember, the variance is the sum of squares divided by n minus 1. And n represents the number of observations. Our sum of squares is 66 divided by our number of observations is 6. So 66 divided by 6 minus 1. So variance will be 66 divided by 5. If you calculate that, variance will be 13.2. Remember, the standard deviation is the square root of variance. So the standard deviation is the square root of 13.2. So the standard deviation will be 3.63. If we compare the standard deviation from the mean, if we were to go back, if we were to go back and compare the mean of 5 and the standard deviation of 3.63, we would find that the mean and the standard deviation are closer together. What does this tell you? If the standard deviation is a higher number, it means that the numbers have deviated significantly from the mean. And if you look at our series again, you will notice that our numbers range from 1 to 9. That means they have a higher standard deviation. Let's calculate the median.
for Friday the 13th accidents and poisoning. So the accident reported in different months of Friday the 13th are 7, 6, 5, 5, 7, and 6. The first step is to organize the data in ascending order. So we have 5, 5, 6, 7, and 7. So the median is, remember, n plus 1 divided by 2. n is the number of observations. So the number of observations in our case is 6 observations. So 6 plus 1 divided by 2 will give us the median. So the median is 7 divided by 2. And the median is the 3.5th number in ascending order. Again, considering the series of 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7. The 3.5th number is between 6 and 6 in the series. So to get the median, we add 6 to 6 and we divide by 2. So the median is 6 plus 6 divided by 2. The median is 12 divided by 2. And the median is 6. Let's calculate the interquartile range for this series. Again, we have the numbers in ascending order 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, and 7. So the lower quartile is 25%, which is a quarter. 25%. So 25% of our series, we'll get it by getting half of our series 50 divided by 2. So our series have 6 numbers. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So our lower quartile is 3 plus 1 divided by 2, our lower quartile is 4 divided by 2. That means our lower quartile is the second number from the beginning of the series. The second number from the beginning of the series is 5, and the lower quartile is 5. Again, the upper quartile is half of our series is 3 plus 1 divided by 2. The upper quartile is 4 divided by 2, which is the upper quartile is the second number from the end of the series. The second number from the end of the series is 7. So our upper quartile is 7. So the interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, which is, in our case, 7 minus 5. So the interquartile range is 2. Let's calculate the mean. Remember what we said earlier? The formula for the mean is sum of observations divided by number of observations. Remember, there is another sophisticated formula for the mean written in Greek letters. But the easiest way to remember is this. Sum of all observations divided by number of observations, we get the mean. So the mean is equals to 5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 6 plus 7 plus 7 divided by 6. In this case, the total of all the numbers is 36 divided by 6, so the mean is 6. Let's calculate the standard deviation. The formula for the standard deviation is that standard deviation is equal to square root of variance. And variance is equal to sum of squares divided by n minus 1, where n represents the number of observations. So the sum of squares is equal to sum of deviance squared. And the deviance is equal to observation minus mean. So let's have a table here to calculate the standard deviations. We have accidents, mean, deviance, and sum of squares. We start with the first number. The first number, the number of accidents is 5, the mean is 6. So the deviance is 5 minus 6 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is equals to 1. So the square there is 1. Again, the second number is 5, the mean is 6. The deviance is 5 minus 6. So negative 1 and then negative 1 squared is equals to 1. The third number is 6 accidents. The mean is 6 accidents. So the deviance is 0. 0 squared is equals to 0. The other number is 6. Ac accident is 6. The mean is 6. So the deviance again is 0. 0 squared is equals to 0. The other number is 7. The mean is 6. The deviance is 7 minus 6 is equals to 1. 1 squared is 1. The other number is 7. Again, the mean is 6. So 7 minus 6 is equals to 1. We get the deviance. 1 squared is equals to 1. So the total or the sum of squares is 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. That is 4. So the variance is equal to sum of squares divided by n minus 1, where n is the number of observations. In our case, the sum of squares is 4 divided by 6 minus 1. 
that is 4 divided by 5 so our variance is 0 0.8 standard deviation is the square root of variance so the square root of 0 0.8 is 0 0.894 when you calculate you see that the standard deviation is a small number compared to the mean this means that our numbers in the series do not deviate significantly from the mean that means they are closer to the mean and if you look you'll see it's five six six seven and seven and our mean is six that means those numbers do not deviate significantly from our mean so standard deviation shows how specific numbers in our sequence deviate from the mean thank you for watching if you like this video and you found value in this video remember to subscribe and thank you.